Oh boy, I am so excited. Here we go. Oh, well, hello everybody and welcome to the Gospelology Show. Well, right now we're getting ready to do our G Fit. That's right, Gospelology Fitness. And I'm so excited. Are you guys ready? Well, all you gotta do is get up and follow all the instructions on the screen. And then we'll be ready to go in and see Miss Latrice for Bible story time. So if you're ready, let's go on one, one. Elbow to knee. Cool down. Well, hello, all my kings and queens. Are you ready for today's affirmation? All right, here we go. I am the head. I am the head. I am not the tail. I am not the tail. I am above. I am above. I am not beneath. I am not beneath. I am a queen. I am a king. Hey, welcome to Bible Story Time with Miss Patrice. Yo, for as long as people have built nations and gone to war against other nations, they have been spies and secret agents. Mm -hmm. While armies, navies, and air forces grab the headlines, waging battle in the open secret agents, wage their battles in the shadows. Oh man, the stories of these battles are never in the headlines. Have you noticed that? You'll never hear about the spies. Mm -hmm. And if they are retold, it is often years after they happen. Yeah. You see, the secret war of spies and agents and double agents are often just as important as any campaign on land, air, and sea. Yeah. You see, what it is is that the missions that secret agents carry out under the cover of darkness, ooh boy, allow the generals and the armies and the politicians to gain an advantage, yeah, over their enemies, because mm -hmm, they get all the secrets, yeah. See, what the spies do is they travel behind enemy lines, yeah, to gather information. Yo, as Christians, we are called to be not so secret agents. Mm hmm Working for the Lord. Yeah. We are born behind enemy lines in a world of sin. Yeah. And God wants us to do our part to help him win the fight against sin. Yo, you know what I'm talking about. You remember last Sunday we talked about Easter? Yeah. You see, Jesus already won the victory. Of course by dying on the cross and paying the price for our sins himself. Now y'all look, it's our job to spread the good news that Jesus died for us and that anyone who believes in him, yeah, in Jesus, can have eternal life. <sighs> Let me tell you what I'm gonna do. Over the next few weeks, I'm gonna tell y'all we're gonna have this thing going on called the Gospelology Spy Camp, yeah. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring some stuff to you that's gonna allow us to take a closer look 
at the first group of not so agent spies. Yeah, it's called the early church. <laughs> yeah, you see what I'm saying? What we're about to do is just like a spy master, a good spy master, Jesus gave his people a mission before he returned home to heaven. Yeah, these men and women risked their lives, I'm telling you, facing hostile crowds and governments so that the world would know about Jesus and how much he loves them. Yeah, so the mission that began with the disciples mm -hmm, and the early followers of Christ mm -hmm, continues to be our mission. Yeah, we have to now be those no, not so secret spies. Yeah, so what we have to do is start to tell all the people about Jesus. So let me do this. Let's go over here with a couple of our agents who are gonna tell us a little bit about what Acts 1 through 12 says about being a secret agent of Jesus. Let's go. Good morning, Jay. Oh, Agent C, come in and have a seat. Oh, thank you, sir. I'm glad you could come on such short notice. I have an important mission for you. I know, I know, I know you do, sir. That could save the world, right? It seems the notorious supervillain, Sid Bad Guy, has created a doomsday device that could wipe out all life on Earth. I don't think I have to tell you what that means. Not at all. It means I need to get out and tell everyone about Jesus! I beg your pardon, agency. That's the mission, right? To go and share the gospel throughout the world. Well, that's a mission, but it's not the mission. Sir, all due respect, it is the mission. Why? The most important thing we could do is tell others that Jesus loves them. I'm not arguing that with you. But... The doomsday device hmm? is the product of a mind that needs Jesus as much as anyone. You know, Jesus died for Sid Bad Guy too, and Blofeld, and Dr. Evil, and Professor Faith. Agency, please stay focused. Sir, I am always focused on the mission. Every morning, I get up and pray that God will allow me to share Jesus with someone. I'm talking about Sid Bad Guy. Me too. When this mission is over, Sid Bad Guy will be one of us. Listen, I'm not letting him join the spy agency. I mean a Christian, sir. No, no, no. The mission is to stop the doomsday device. And the best way to do that is to make Sid Bad Guy one of us. You see, the error of his ways and give his heart to Jesus, that will make him Jesus' friend and he could be our brother in Christ. Or you could just shoot him. What? I beg your pardon? No way, we can't do that. The thing is to go and spread the gospel throughout all the world. And don't forget the doomsday device. Oh, the world is doomed. Oh, you just don't get it. Ah! Hey, did y'all hear that? Man, Agent J and Agent C, yeah, they were talking about how Jesus commanded his followers to be not so secret agents for the kingdom of God. Like those who were gathered to see Jesus return to heaven, we are to go out and make disciples, y'all. Yeah, we are to spread the love of Jesus to others by serving them, loving them, and telling them what Jesus has done for us. Mm -hmm. Let me tell y'all, our mission is to recruit others to our team mm -hmm. so that the church and God's kingdom can grow. 
Mm-hmm. I know you remember Sierra was trying to tell Agent J that we got to get all those people, those people who really don't have a heart for Jesus, that's the ones that we want. Yeah. You see, secret agents are the hands and feet of the governments they serve. Mm -hmm. So we are the hands and feet of the body of Christ. As Christians, it is our job to carry out this mission each day. Are y'all ready? Let me tell you what you need to do. You need to pray. You need to serve. You need to love. And you need to teach the gospel to everyone who will listen. All right? So are y'all ready? Because I'm going to help y'all over the next couple of weeks do this. Let me tell you something. When you watch a spy movie, whether it's Mission Impossible or James Bond or even the Spy Kids, which was one of my favorites, you get the impression that secret agents are the ones who do all the work. I know you do. Let me tell you, they break into secret vaults, right? They hack into all of the computers, right? They steal the secret formulas the secret documents, and everything from the unbreakable safe, right? You see, movie, movie spies are almost superheroes, like in their skill sets, ready for any challenge, mm-hmm, in any situation, so that they can fulfill their mission. Well, guess what? Real life spies, working behind enemy lines, mm-hmm, do their jobs, a little different. Let me tell you what they do. They don't break into the enemy headquarters and then just hack their computers. Mm -mm. What they do is they recruit more agents. Yeah. See, sometimes what happens is like an American agent working in a hostile country. Yeah. What they're going to do is they're going to recruit citizens of that country to do the work for them. Yeah. You see, a real life spy seeks out people who will help them fulfill their mission. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of like they recruit government workers and government officials who will supply them with all the intel. Mm -hmm. That's just a short word for information. Yeah, I'm trying to talk spy talk, okay? What they do is they get people who work for the enemy to do the hard work for them. Yeah, I know you remember Sierra was trying to tell Agent J that, that we need to get, you know, all of those bad guys on our side. Yeah, so they can give their heart to Jesus. You see, our mission is not unlike the mission of those modern day spies. You see, by sharing the good news of Jesus, we are turning our friends, our classmates, and our neighbors from sin to salvation. Yeah, that's what Sierra was trying to tell Agent J. You see, the more we share the good news of Jesus, huh, the more people will come over to our side. Yeah! As we fulfill our mission, the church will grow and so will the kingdom of heaven. Oh man, that'll be so cool. We'll make more not so agents, secret agents for God. We'll make more agents, uh-huh, who can take up the mission with us. And see, the more people we'll have, the better, yeah. We will make more disciples who are able to claim the victory that Jesus won for us on the cross. <laughs> I'm so excited. So what I want you to do is think about all of the things we talked about today, and I want you to think about the game that we're going to replay. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Let's play a game called Mission Trivia. All right, here we go. The book of blank begins with Jesus returning to earth. That's right, Acts. Very good, kings and queens. Okay, here we go. Jesus gave his people a blank to go and tell other people about him. That's right, mission, yes! Okay, here we go, another one. Jesus promised to send the what to help his followers fulfill their mission. 
That's right, the Holy Spirit. Oh my goodness, you kings and queens are on it today. Okay, now listen. God wants us to tell our friends and neighbors about blank. Yes, Jesus, that's right. Okay, one more. We can be blank secret blanks for Jesus by carrying out this mission. Special agents, yes, you kings and queens were awesome. Oh my goodness. Man, I'm looking for some special spies, okay? Not so secret agents who want to dress up in their favorite spy outfits. Okay, I need you to put on your spy outfits and send them to Gospelology so Mr. Trees can put them on the screen so we can show everybody how many not so secret agents we got out here doing Jesus' work, yeah. So if you're ready, I want you to go to gospelologyclub.com, go ahead and send me a picture of you and your favorite spy spy suits, okay? All right, I can't wait to see all my followers out there who are on my team to get Jesus, yay! All the information that he needs so that we can grow disciples for him. Mr. Trees loves you, and I'm gonna sneak off now because I'm getting ready to go in there and sneak and see what Promac is doing in the lab. If you're ready, come along with me. Are you ready? Here we go. Presenter is Olivia Wilkerson. Take it away, Olivia. Hi, my name is Olivia Wilkerson from First Baptist Church, South Hill, Chesapeake, Virginia, with this week's scientist in residence. This week's scientist in residence is Dr. Rebecca Lee Crumpler. Dr. Rebecca Lee Crumpler was the first African American woman to earn a medical degree. She also wrote one of the country's early, early medical textbooks, a guide for women and children entitled The Book of Medical Disorders. Crumpler was born in Delaware, but she spent most of her early years in Pennsylvania. Her experience there helped set on the path to medicine. She, beca she began practicing as a nurse in 1852 in Charlestown, Massachusetts, before the profession required a specific training course in 
1860, she graduated from the New England Female Medical College. After she completed her coursework and after the Civil War, she needed, she, she moved to Richmond, Virginia because she felt her skills would be most needed there. She served a community of 30,000 people, many of whom were freed slaves who otherwise had no access to medical care. According to the NLM, Crumpler also gained valuable experience treating diseases of women and children. She wrote her medical text in 1883. After retiring from the practice of medicine, she based, based on notes she had taken during her years as a doctor. Let's take a look at her video. Dr. Rebecca Lee Crumpler, a Delaware native and a trailblazer in medical history, became the first black female doctor in America when she graduated from the New England Female Medical College in 1864 with the official title, Doctress of Medicine. Dr. Crumpler practiced in Boston, then moved to Richmond, Virginia following the end of the Civil War. Despite the racism she faced in the Southern state, she worked with the Freedmen's Bureau to provide medical care for newly freed slaves that wouldn't have access to it otherwise. When she later returned to Massachusetts, she continued her charitable work by providing care to those in her community, regardless of whether they could pay. In 1883, Crumpler continued to make history when she published the Book of Medical Discourses. This was one of the first medical publications by an African-American in history and provided medical information and advice for women and their children. Dr. Crumpler said in her book, I early conceived a liking for and saw every opportunity to relieve the suffering of others, which she showed throughout her life. Dr. Crumpler made history as the first black female doctor and continues to serve as an inspiration in the medical community. This week, scientist in residence, Dr. Rebecca Lee Crumpler. Back to you, Janelle. If you would like to be one of our presenters for the scientist in residence, hit me up on our website. Back to you, Promac, for the lesson. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Promac in the laboratory. Hey, I heard y'all were spies. Ah, well, I got a secret message in a test tube, and I would like to see if we can solve this problem. So I'm going to take my stuff out of the test tube. Okay, I got it right here. And there's a secret message inside to tell Promac what it is and how to do it. Now, I'm gonna undo this right here for our message. Let's see what we got here. Oh, we have these little cubes. Hmm, they're very interesting, my kings and queens. Let's see. I mean, they're like really tiny cubes. Do you see that? Wow. Well, I am going to actually do what they tell me to do with this. It says that I have to put the tubes in this water. Now, some of them have been traveling together for a long time, so they're stuck together. Yeah, so I gotta separate them. So I'm gonna separate a couple of them right here so we can get our secret message. I heard you guys were on a mission. Yeah, a mission to win souls for Jesus. So, we're trying to use these cues here to actually decode a secret message. So I'm gonna take probably about five. Or should I take 12? Ha <laughs> ha, the 12 disciples, right? But let's take five and see how they've been traveling together and some of them are stuck together. So Promac's gonna take them apart. Easy, just like that. Wow, they've been stuck together for a long time, huh? That right there was actually three cubes. Well, Promac is gonna do what it says, and I'm gonna put them inside of our water. Now I have to wait 24 hours so I can see what happens and what message is going to tell us, okay? So here I go, I'm gonna drop one tube, one cube, two cubes. Three cubes, four cubes, five cubes. Let's do seven. OK, 
Okay, that's five cubes. And let's take two more. Six and seven. So now we got the seven cubes in our water. And now Promac is gonna wait 24 hours. And then I'm gonna come back to tell you what happened to our cubes in the water. You ready? Let's go. Wow, where did our dots go? Well, you remember when I put them inside, they were small like this, right? Well, look at them now. Let's see. Whoa! Are you serious? Wow! There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. Whoa! There's five. And there's six. Wow! Let's head over to Science Land and see why this happened. This was amazing. Ready? Go. Wow. Wasn't that amazing? How we've seen these cubes that are now, they were dehydrated, but now they're hydrated. This means that they have absorbed as much water as they possibly can. You see, the little cubes can grow up to 200 times their original size when hydrated. Wow! The thing is, the scientific name for water cubes is cross-linked polyacrylamide, copolymer gel. Uh -huh. Say that as fast as you can five times without making a mistake and you can win a prize. <laughs> If you looked under a microscope at these super absorbent polymers, you discovered that they, link, they, that they are linked in a really long chain. These identical molecules absorb water, lots and lots of water, as you found out. In fact, the cubes soaked up around 300 times their original weight in water. Wow! Super absorbent polymers are used to and continue in countries all over the world to preserve water in the soil, especially during drought conditions. The polymer holds the water until the plants or crops need it, then releases the water. Isn't that amazing? Well, that's like God holding us until we get it right. Yeah, you know sometimes he gotta hold us for a really long time. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Cause some of us just don't understand. Yeah, well the thing is, you gotta understand that you have to be Jesus' forever friend and he'll hold you forever. And it's really easy. It's as easy as A, B, C. That's right, A, admit that you have sinned. And then B, believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And then C, choose and confess. Choose Jesus to be your forever friend and confess that he is Lord. And if you're ready to do that, I'm ready to play with, pray with you today. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Hello, God. It's me, Promac. And I just wanted to share with you these boys and girls who want to make Jesus their forever friend. So today, God, they A, admit that they have sinned. And then they B, believe that your son Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And then they C, choose and confess. They choose to Jesus to be their forever friend, and they confess that he is Lord. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us science today and helping us be Jesus' forever friend. We love you, and we promise that we'll talk to you again before the end of the day. In your precious son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.